Whenever you're ready. Yep. Alright. Yo, what's up guys? Uh, Y'all ready for this presentation? Because I'm about to ace it. <laughs> yeah. Alright. So, I'm Nathan Terabassi, and this is my presentation on the effects of texting on language. Now, I'm sure every single one of you in here has been texting for years now. You send so many texts a day to so many different people, and you use textisms. Uh, if you don't know what a textism is, it could be as simple as BRB, be right back, TTYL, talk to you later, LOL, laugh out loud, or even an emoji that you throw in there at the end of your sentence. Um, it's the most common form of communication between our generations. It's so funny that it's taken off in such a quick manner that no one's really taken time to realize it might have a different effect on how we talk and communicate with each other. Alright, so when looking at texting as a language, there's a huge negative connotation that I found. So, <laughs> everyone seems to think that texting is just the devil. It's a terrible thing. They think that it provides lazy habits or incorrect grammar skills, things that you pick up on that people might not really notice when they're writing or talking in a formal setting. So, to elaborate more on formal versus informal settings and when it's okay and when not okay to use textisms, formal language could be an interview, a formal paper, an exam, something that is just not very comfortable to you, where you don't want to just say, yo, what's going on? But informal language is completely fine to use. When you're talking to your friends, just random conversations, someone walking by, just texting, internet chat, anything that we are confronted with every single day, it's okay to say informal things. At least I think so. So, Mark Warsher from the University of Cali, Irvine, uh, states in his journal a development prospect or perspective on technology and language education. <coughs> he states that both language and technology are tools for individuals and societal development. Now, when I think about that quote, he's trying to say that texting isn't necessarily a language, really. It's more of a tool to pry our language to a different level. So, there's positives and negatives to this, just like anything else. The positives that could be associated with it are quick, concise, and simple messages that get your point across, but don't necessarily take as much time as a complete, formal, written response. Now, the negatives that a lot of people focus on are lazy, sloppy habits with grammar, spelling. Spelling is probably the biggest. We have spell check and Word documents and your texting and anything that you do. And you don't really feel the pressure to know how to spell things. And when it comes down to it, the only way to uh, portray your knowledge of that word and how to spell is to actually do it without help. So you have to be careful with how much you text and what you're getting from your texting. But the positive and, positive and negatives uh, sparked my interest to do my own research. Um, I did a survey and asked 32 of fellow college students at the University of Mount Union, both male and female, of all majors, <coughs> just some simple, easy yes or no questions. Do you text at least 10 times a day? Do you use textisms? And do you use textisms in communication outside of like, texting? So this first graph here, says 20% of the students that I surveyed said they don't use textisms at all. But 80% use them in basically every message. So whether it's just, like I said, a simple emoji at the end of your sentence, every single kid is basically using them. Some of them might not even know what a textism is when I asked, so you have to take that into perspective as well. Now the second graph though, does texting affect language. So, 16% said yes, and 84% said no. Outside of texting, 
language is very pertinent. You can't just use sloppy language all the time. And these kids think that texting's fine. It doesn't really affect their language and habits when it comes to formal. I actually then asked five of my professors similar questions about whether these correlated at all. So even though they said they didn't find it in their language, the teacher said the same. Nothing in their uh, exams or essays or anything that they get submitted for uh, grading has the textisms that are scary when you look at texting. So it's pretty interesting to think that texting doesn't affect that way. Now, David Crystal, the author of Texting, The Great Debate, states that abbreviation is not a new language. It's been around for years. So the textisms that are used in everyday texting aren't really something new. But a lot of people s tend to say that texting and formal language are two different things. If they've been around for so many years, I think it's kind of bogus to say that they're two different languages. Um, now, my biggest thing is the fact that people say texting bleeds into your formal language. In my opinion, the brain can differenti differentiate when and when not to use informal language. And it's really simple for you to notice in your language, when you're taking an exam, you don't say, haha, I don't really think I know what I'm doing on this, talk to you later, peace out. But you, you know that if it's formal and you need it to be formal, you can make it formal. But if it's an informal setting, you're comfortable with just throwing out a LOL or a JK in common conversation. It's not going to hurt your reputation. So, overall, I think that texting only positively affects our language. It's a whole other way to portray your message and talk to people in a concise and basically perfect manner for the set. So, <clears throat> hit me up with any questions if you got. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, guys. This is my work site.